Hi, thanks for joining me for our third video in this series. As you know, in our last installment, we talked about the seven success factors necessary to find and nurture a healthy, evolved relationship. It really sets a foundation for everything a wonderful, happy, loving bond is built on. But today, we're going to talk about some of the darker things, some of those red flags and signs of trouble that things are headed in a bad direction. One of the biggest mistakes I see women making, especially early on, and trust me, I've made this mistake plenty of times myself, is after meeting a new guy, women often overlook certain red flags as not important, or they rationalize certain bad behavior as justified, like, oh, this is just a one-time occurrence, and overlook it. And they choose not to see these warning signs of potential trouble ahead. Listen, I know it's easy to get caught up in the moment, you feel that spark of attraction, the pull of lust, and the euphoria of meeting a new guy who seems great on the surface. But if you know how to look, you can pretty accurately predict the trajectory of a relationship just by observing what happens in the early days. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at how to look. So I'm going to start by sharing five of the worst types of guys you could ever date and why they should be avoided at all costs. Now, truthfully, there are more than five. There's actually 14, but these five are my Hall of Famers in the terms of the most common and the worst, most destructive personalities to the success of a long-term relationship. I think they deserve special attention, and that's why I want to go over them with you today in some detail. So number one is the charming con artist. This guy is articulate and smooth and often very successful and handsome, and he will sweep you right off your feet. But underneath, this guy could be bad news because these qualities are the outward sign of a guy who might be suffering from an antisocial personality disorder or someone who may even be a sociopath. Now listen, not all sociopaths are actually dangerous, but there are many that are. There are a lot of people who are sociopaths who don't commit heinous crimes and will never end up on the evening news. In fact, 4% of our population, or 1 in 25 people, are estimated to be an honest to God, bona fide sociopath. Crazy, right? However, they are dangerous to the women they target. They often are looking to score money for their own selfish needs. They get high on ripping people off playing you until you realize it's too late to get out. Sociopaths are people who lack empathy toward other human beings, and they can be incredibly destructive in their relationships because they live without the ability to truly love another person. And they have no conscious guilt, shame, or remorsefulness for their actions. They will never apologize for the wrong that they've done against you, so don't wait for one. So if you meet an articulate, intelligent, successful guy, does this automatically mean he's a charming con artist? No, of course not. But just watch out. They are expert cons, and it will take a while to catch on to their game. According to Dr. Phil McGraw, here's a few clues on how to spot them. One, they're deceitful. They repetitively lie, and they have a pattern of conning others for their own personal pleasure, lifestyle, or profit. Two, they have patterns of being impulsive and they repeatedly fail to plan ahead. Three, they can be aggressive and irritable, moody and angry. Four, they're irresponsible and have repeated failures in business or relationships and may struggle to hold consistent work or honor their financial obligations. Next, they don't conform to social norms and they often break the law. And like I said, these types of guys are really easy to fall for because outwardly they appear to have it all. They seem to be that whole package we all want. They're intelligent, funny, great conversationalists, and highly charismatic. But as soon as you spot the warning signs, trust me, you need to get out. Guys like this also never change. So if you see even a hint of him being manipulative, showing a lack of remorse or guilt, and callous lack of empathy or poor behavioral controls. These are warning signs you shouldn't ignore and you'd be wise to walk away or at the very least, watch out and proceed with extreme caution. 
Okay, number two. Let's talk about the emotional manipulators. And there are three emotional manipulators. The narcissist, the borderline, and bipolar personality types. I know we've all heard these words before, but let's take a closer look at who these guys are and what makes them tick. Maybe you'll recognize a few guys you've known or even dated, and I'll share with you why they're number two on my top five worst guys to date list. Narcissist. Ah, we all know at least one guy like this, right? A guy with that grandiose sense of self importance, a healthy dose of arrogance with a big scoop of attention-seeking behavior. They want the praise and accolades of people to fall all over them, and especially you, even if they don't have the achievements in life to warrant this excessive level of admiration. And according to Dr. Ross Rosenberg, as many 16% of the population may have narcissistic personality disorder. But get this, 75% of the people who are diagnosed are men. And it doesn't matter if the guy is rich or poor, black or white, where he comes from, nothing like that, because narcissists come in all colors, creeds, and socioeconomic flavors. They are everywhere. And the reason you need to be so careful with these guys is that they're generally bad in relationships because they're never truly able to love another person, not even themselves, because deep down they're conceited, selfish, proud, and aloof, and they are extremely sensitive to criticism. Seriously, if you've ever known a narcissist, you know exactly what I mean. They live for themselves. Your wants, needs, and desires will always take a back seat to theirs, which may lead you to feel like the subordinate partner in the relationship. The next of the emotional manipulators to watch out for is the borderline personality disorder. We've all heard this term, but what exactly does it mean? And why is it so toxic to relationships? Well, those with borderline personality disorder have a persistent pattern of unstable relationships with up and down cycles with respect to the love of their partner and their self-image. This may include severe impulsivity with regarding to sex, spending money, binge eating, drug use, and even reckless driving. These guys are intensely moody and angry and they go out of their way to avoid abandonment, whether it's real or imagined abandonment. This particular disorder affects as many as 6% of the population. And guys who have this are really, really bad in relationships because they seek control by demanding and be un being unforgiving. Their moods are highly erratic with intense, fast anger over trivial things and they try to punish you if they perceived you hurt or abandoned them in any way, even if it's imagined or misinterpreted. They are emotionally and verbally abusive. They often lie, play you, may not talk to you for days, withhold sex, or get stingy with money. And ultimately, they subversely destroy the relationship by constantly eroding and picking at the foundation with this type of behavior. After all, no matter how much you care for him, there's only so much of this you're gonna be able to take. You will become exhausted trying to deal with someone like this. And the tragic thing about this situation is there's almost nothing you can do to fix it. They are torn between their desperate need of craving love and their fierce need for control and independence. There's a cycle of, I love you, I hate you, and boy, is it traumatic and either side of the corn, and they rarely apologize after an anger episode. They just pretend that nothing happened the next day. And ultimately, there's a really strong chance they're sabotaged to the relationship. But always, they blame all the relationship problems on you. Medication and treatment rarely help, but he has to decide to be the one to seek treatment. You see, many borderlines are narcissistic as well. So they often will never admit to having a problem and rarely will seek or follow through with treatment. They may go for treatment for a little bit just to appease you to, until things blow over. And, but soon they quit, saying it's ridiculous. Therefore, this one is the worst personality type of all, in my opinion. So if you're already dating a guy like this, I'd highly urge you to save yourself a lot of heartache and misery and simply move on. Now, let's talk about our third emotional manipulator, the guy who's bipolar. 
In some ways, these guys are similar to the borderline personalities, but their highs and lows are more extreme, and they show extreme mood swings. And left untreated, this disorder will almost certainly ruin relationships, jobs, and even lives. There is medication to help control bipolar disorder, but as with a borderline personality, he has to be the one to seek treatment and stick with it. In their mantic phase during their up or on periods, these guys can seem pretty great. They can seem extremely happy, energetic, and fun. But when the dark side comes out and they sink into fits of deep depression or anger, they're irritable, constantly in a state of agitation. Being with them is like walking on eggshells to see which guy you're gonna get. And their mood can often change on a dime without what seems any provocation at all. During their manic phases, their behavior can be so extremely impulsive and risky. They frequently have bouts of sexual promiscuity, of course you would know about that, lavish spending, excessive alcohol and drug use, and a number of different things can have serious personal, financial, financial and relationship consequences. Maintaining strong, healthy, long-term relationships with these types of guys is really tough because their behavior undermines the sense of security, trust, and reliability necessary for a loving, mature, evolved relationship to thrive. Here are some signs to watch out for when he's riding one of his highs or up periods. Is he being extremely impulsive? Is he suffering from racing thoughts or actions? Does he have an inflated feeling of power, importance, and greatness? Does he seem to need minimal or no sleep? Does he talk too much or talk really, really fast? Is he easily distracted and does his attention flits between many different things at one time? Or the opposite, is he intensely focused on a goal activity that he will not let go of until it's done? And during one of his low points, does he have a loss of energy and show signs of extreme fatigue? Does he excessively sleep for days? Is he indecisive and cloudy? Does he have trouble focusing or concentrating? Does he express feelings of inappropriate guilt or worthlessness? Is he sluggish or restless? Is he quickly gaining or losing weight? Or is he having recurring thoughts of death or suicide? If so, he may very well be bipolar and you'll be doing yourself a big favor to get out of this relationship early. 90% of these guys' marriages end in divorce. I would suggest you save yourself future emotional heartbreak and move on. It's time to talk about guy number three. Guys with various types of addictions of the five types to stay away from. I don't think I need to spell out the fact if a guy has a problem with drugs or alcohol, why this is an immediate sign to run and not look back. No matter how great a guy is when he's sober, if he doesn't get help, these problems sooner or later will destroy his life and likely the lives of everyone close to him. So do yourself a favor and get out quick. But what about other, more subtle types of addictions? There are many kinds. And it isn't always evident when you start dating that the person you're falling for has a problem. In fact, some addictions are so closely guarded and shrouded in secrecy, it can take months or even years to realize he has one, such as porn addiction, food, and even spending addictions may not become obvious for a long time, while others such as gambling, alcohol, or hard drugs usually make themselves known more quickly. But the bottom line is this, the addiction will always come first before you, and they will always lie to protect it. You'll never love someone enough to have them break free from their addiction, and you'll get tangled up in a destructive relationship, and he'll bring you down with him. If a guy admits to having an addiction of any kind, my recommendation is he has to be clean and addiction-free for at least two years before you should even get serious. Even when clean, often the destructive personalities are left behind. And by all means, don't fall in love with the addict's potential or empty promises of getting clean. It's one thing if he admits he had a problem and has successfully dealt with it, and it's quite another to hear a guy's intentions of getting past it. Trust me, I've been there. You don't want this kind of trouble. If you're just getting to know a guy, save yourself 
the heartache and get out as soon as the addiction is discovered. All right, guy number four of the five to stay away from. This is the passive aggressive, poor communicator. These passive aggressive guys are complicated and initially can come across as passionate, charming, seductive, boyish, and innocently needy. They can be kind, gentle, generous, and even slightly aloof, but underneath, they're cold and never say what they truly mean or tell you what they're really thinking. And through a subtle game of behaviors, you're often made to feel manipulated, betrayed, and hurt. When these guys are upset, they purposefully do things to get under your skin and feign innocence if you question them about it. They don't manage your anger well. They also don't express what they're feeling and bury their emotions until they come bumbling out as excessive inappropriate anger, of course, targeted at you. So here are a few signs that your seemingly great guy may be just a passive aggressive poor communicator. First, they procrastinate on a job they promised to complete, which drives you crazy, and they do that on purpose. They are late or make you late for an event that's very important to you. They deny, avoid, or lie to you so you won't get upset. They also hold back in expressing their emotions. They negate your legitimate complaints about their behavior and turn the tables to make themselves look like the person who's been wronged. They do things to purposely frustrate you. They can never forgive or forget. They constantly use words against you. They use your past mistakes as ammunition in every argument. They'll say something cruel to put you down or raise themselves up. Then gloss over it by saying, huh, I'm just kidding. Again, if you're in a new relationship with a guy who's exhibiting these types of passive aggressive behaviors, I'd highly suggest moving on. There are plenty of great guys out there without these hangups. But if you are in a relationship with a guy like this, all is not lost. With coaching, both individual and as a couple, this condition can be managed and changed. And you may even learn how you might be contributing to it by enabling or accepting this behavior. But that's a lot of work. And I'd only suggest this for couples interested in saving their long-term relationships. All right, we're up to guy number five. The jealous and controlling paranoid Oh my goodness, flat out, jealousy ruins relationships, and it is rooted in a lack of self-esteem. Insecure guys will often imagine worst case scenarios or compare themselves unfavorably to their supposed rival. They experience overwhelming anxiety after misinterpreting an innocent event, making them believe that their partner might leave them for someone else. Eventually, they'll drive you away by acting controlling, evasive, needing, and demanding. They create the scenario the most feared, that of losing their partner. Here are a few signs that your new guy may be the jealous, controlling, paranoid type. First, he doesn't call when he says he will, but he expects you to pick up all his calls and respond immediately to his texts. He's secretive with the phone, computer, and his time. Either he's purposely trying to make you jealous, or he himself is engaging in deceitful behavior, and that is often common. He makes eyes at women when you're out together, especially when you're talking to him, making you feel less than important. He remarks on another woman's beauty to you, or compares your breast size, your height, your weight, your outfit, your hair color, your makeup to another woman's, suggesting you try it too. That's an emotionally abusive way to put you down. He will compete with everything you do or say, needing to feel that he won or is better than you than, and your accomplishments. He often insists during conversations that you're wrong and he's right, or he minimizes your opinions, suggestions, or achievements. He must have the last word, will talk over you, negate what you say, or just plain not listen. He'll be sarcastic, blaming and unforgiving, and will do anything to make you look bad or insignificant. His self-esteem is so low, and the only way he can feel powerful is to make you feel or look inferior, and what good is that? He will try to convince you that he's jealous because he loves you so much. Men who have healthy self-esteem don't play the jealousy game. They will give you the love and attention you deserve without hurting you in the process. Jealousy is selfish and used by toxic men who know that they don't deserve you. 
Again, my advice is if you just met a guy who's exhibiting these signs of jealous behavior, cut your losses and get out quick. He's just going to tangle you up in his drama and self-esteem issues that you don't want this aggravation and you don't need it. So there they are, my top five guys to avoid like the plague. Listen, I know everybody has their own issues and hangups. As women, we certainly have ours too. And I don't want you to think I'm coming across as harsh or insensitive to the needs of these guys who have real mental health issues that they need to deal with. But my aim is to help you, to help you avoid situations that are most likely going to put you through pain and misery or you may have already experienced. I can tell you from experience, there are a ton of great guys out there who are loving, intelligent, talented, and passionate, and they're real gems who are just waiting to meet a woman like you. And I wanna help you find him, that guy. And the first step to doing that is breaking free of any toxic relationship you may be in now and learning how to stop the cycle of falling for the wrong kind of guy over and over again who will only hurt you. So if you need to, watch us again, or possibly even a third time, and I'll see you very soon for our last video, where I will talk to you about putting everything you've learned into action. Until then, as always, I wish you to have the love you deserve.